If you're searching for an answer to your binge eating problem, chances are you keep coming across the same piece of advice, which is about don't restrict, stop trying to lose weight, stop wanting to lose weight, and chances are you stand a good shot at recovery. And this I think is the ultimate dilemma of anybody who is trying to heal their relationship with food, is you're being told that in order to do that, you have to give up something that potentially you have wanted for many, many years, something which you cannot imagine your life, living a life wherein you don't lose weight, where you don't get your body to the point where you feel like it needs to be. And I want to acknowledge there's going to be a lot of body diversity out there in terms of people watching this. So some people will be having mobility or health struggles, body dysmorphia, or a really difficult, difficult body image, despite maybe not living in a body whereby they experience fat phobia in their day-to-day -day lives. But the question, the dilemma, is still the same question for everybody. And it can feel impossible when you're stuck in it. And the mind will rally against, is this really an either or? Do I really have to choose? Can I recover from binge eating and lose weight at the same time? Because maybe you're telling yourself, actually, if you don't binge eat, you feel like chances are without the binge eating, you would lose weight. And the scary thing is about this dilemma is what if you gain weight? There are many people who share their experiences out there where recovery from binge eating does involve gaining weight and that can feel completely unacceptable. I can remember when I was right in it, I remember a very distinct moment where I felt completely trapped in my body. I felt like I was suffocating in this, this body that was just heavy and felt too big and felt like it almost wasn't a part of me. This was not, this was not me. I'm, this body doesn't represent how I see myself or how I think I should be. It, it was such a disconnect. And there was one moment where I was sitting in a classroom and I just, I wanted to stand up and scream and tear the flesh from my bones. And I remember this feeling so viscerally, like inside I was just screaming. Now I would say in my experience, there's only a handful of moments where it felt that level of distressing was always distressing, but that level. And I'm conscious there are people out there who feel like that all the time. Now I've mentioned in some of my earlier videos about Byron Katie and how her work was absolutely transformative for me on my recovery path. Because what it did is it helped me to see beyond black and white thinking. Byron Katie says, and I love this, I try to hold on to this when I'm, <laughs> when I'm in a judgmental mood, she says that the only thing people are guilty of is believing their thoughts. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this today was actually I, I got up this morning, I normally do my YouTube video on a Thursday morning, and there has been a situation with a particular person that's been bothering me for a few months. And I've a couple of times had a few thoughts that maybe I should sit down and do the Byron Katie method. I'll link to this stuff below what it is and where you can find out more about it. But if I sit down and do this, then, then maybe I can resolve a lot of my thinking around this problem. And the thing was, it's taken me so long to actually do it because I've been convinced I was right. I thought, yes, I know when I sit down and I do the Byron Katie method that yes, I normally feel a bit better and yes, I challenge my thinking. But in this situation, I was certain I was right and the other person involved was the one who was in the wrong. It was hard to get myself to sit down and question my thoughts because I really didn't think there was anything wrong with my thinking. I thought there was something wrong in the situation. Maybe you can see where this is going, but when I sat down finally this morning, about an hour ago, to really look at what I was believing and question my beliefs, I could see that I was stuck in a spiral of judgment and self-righteousness. And I genuinely hadn't been aware of that. And um, here's what it did. It made me teary because it humbled me. Now, what does this have to do with the topic of this video? Well, it's simply this. This is what I think recovery involves. It involves the willingness to discover, discover for yourself, not me telling you anything, the willingness to discover that 
90% of what you believe about yourself and your body and your relationship with food isn't even based in objective reality, as in it's not true or it doesn't have to be true. When we are making conclusions about our own experiences, we create our own truth. And then we live that truth and we have confirmation bias and our behavior and our emotions, all of that follow that truth. So it is true. So one of the beliefs could be, there is no way I could live life in a meaningful, satisfying way unless my body changes or unless I get this health outcome. And if that's your belief and you stick to that belief, no other reality is gonna be possible. And it's gonna feel impossible to step back from frantically pursuing weight loss in my experience, and this is not going to be everyone's experience, I don't want to come across preachy, but in my experience, it's actually finding the humility to see where I have been and continue to be stubborn and I want to say a bit arrogant, by which I mean, I, I, and I can still see this streak in me and I'm working on it, guys. This, this tendency to think that I'm right. <laughs> and I will sometimes cling to that even though it's causing me pain because that the initial sting of humbling myself, it, it hurts. Like I, I, when I saw it on paper this morning, what I'd been doing, there was a moment where my ego took a real hit and then there was relief. <laughs> And, and what I found is that on the other side of humility, the other side of the willingness to be wrong is possibility, is relief. Now, I don't know if everybody will find that on the other side of this, but I wanted to just offer it in case it speaks to you. I'm gonna pop some links below to some Byron Katie stuff to her worksheets. And also she has so much stuff on YouTube that you can just watch her method being played out. She does it with other people in probably hundreds of videos. So you can see it in action with others. And <laughs> it's always easier to see where others are getting it wrong than ourselves, am I right? I know this is a hard path to tread. You're not the only one. You're not broken. The only thing you're guilty of as Byron Katie would say, is of believing your thoughts about it.